Welcome. Well, the title is exactly as it sounds, not a detail being embellished here. It is official, ladies and gentlemen. John MacArthur is now officially partnering with ecumenical leader extraordinaire, purpose-driven heretic, Rick Warren. That's right. At the Proclaim 2019 conference coming up this March of 2019, John MacArthur the ever discerning and lauded, venerated John MacArthur will be partnering up, saddling up to, pun intended, to pastor of Saddleback Church, Rick Warren. Rick Warren is a big fan of the Pope. He says, if you love Pope Francis, you'll love Jesus. Uh, Rick Warren's a big fan of really anything. Rick Warren is a humanitarian with a veneer of pseudo-Christianity uh, in order to propagate false teaching. John MacArthur will also be joining Greg Laurie, who has, among other things, been a promoter of uh, Rick Warren and um, some other deviants that we'll get into in a moment. But I've been warning about this for quite some time. I've been warning about the errors of John MacArthur and his camp and those who follow him, those who uh, purport him to be something of a prophet of our day. Uh, ironically, the same people are of the extreme cessationist camp and don't believe in any of that stuff. Yet the way they talk about John MacArthur uh, is always teetering on idolatry. I have attempted to warn about this for quite some time, well over a year, two years, something, something to that effect. But here it is, John MacArthur hanging out at the Proclaim... 2019 conference coming up this March. This is official. Now what do we do? Where are all the discerners at now? Where you at, boys? Let's look at this. What is Proclaim? Proclaim is the uh, the national, uh, what is it, the International Christian Media, NRB is the name of the association, the National Religious Broadcasters. This is a Christian build event. Okay, that means everybody attending there is presupposed to be a believer and in unity. That's why they're smiling next to each other, right? This isn't just some random conference. The NRB, International Christian Media Convention, is jam-packed as a jam-packed four-day event that connects, equips, and edifies thousands of Christian communicators. By the assertion of this organization themselves, they are touting all of the communicators as Christians, and therefore all in one assembly. John MacArthur and uh, Rick Warren right there in, in the center smiling together. And there's a couple of other people we'll address. Uh, even at, at the top of their page here, one generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts, Psalm 145 4. Yes, there is no question that this is billed as a Christian event and those who attended are in unison and unity together. John MacArthur and Rick Warren, purpose-driven Rick Warren, whom even John MacArthur's right-hand man, his bulldog, so to speak, the editor of his books and the executive director of Grace to You, says that um, uh, Rick Warren promotes um, a, a, another gospel. R Rick Warren um, promotes something of a another gospel. He wrote an entire article about uh, Rick Warren uh, amid the John Piper controversy back around 2010. And um, had nothing positive to say about Rick Warren, and rightly so. Rick Warren is about as false as they come. And worse than most, uh, because he bridges the gap between everyone. Rick Warren's everywhere, all the time. Rick Warren, that's Rick Warren right there. Rick Warren hanging out at the Vatican with the Pope, with, uh, with you name it. Gurus, New Agers. Rick Warren is a demonstrable false teacher and a heretic in no uncertain terms. And uh, John MacArthur, there he is in unity with him. Let's hear from the NRB itself. What does it tout itself to be? Listen. At NRB's very core is the Bible. Evangelical communicators committed to the word of God for the spread of the gospel. 
At the core is the Bible, evangelical communicators together. NRB is first and foremost about advancing biblical truth. First and foremost about advancing biblical truths. That is their mission. That is their mission. NRB is about advancing biblical truths with Christians together. Together. Unity. Together. John MacArthur and Rick Warren and uh, Greg Laurie. Here is one of the, uh, this is a a big, again, religious broadcasting event, right? One of the exhibits that will be there that is promoted by the NRB and Proclaim Conference is TBN. TBN. They've got a big, uh, here they are, they've got a station, station 445. Uh, This is who's being promoted by the NRB. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the Trinity Broadcasting Network, what is TBN? TBN is this. TBN is Joel Osteen, heretic. T.D. Jakes, Trinity-denying modalist, heretic, and prosperity preacher. Christine Kane, same difference. Robert Morris. This is just this is just the front page. Uh, gosh, we could we could scroll through a whole host of heresy, but right up top, Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Christine Kane, and Robert Morris. That's who TBN is. That's who's promoted by the NRB, where John MacArthur will be hanging out with Rick Warren, and not just hanging out in unity, promoting biblical truth together as a Christian together. That is TBN. TBN, as you can see, hosts uh, Mr. Robert Morris. Who's Robert Morris? Well, he's also affiliated with Daystar Television. Daystar Television. Uh, let's just look at some of Daystar Television's uh, lineup. Let's see. We got uh, we got Sid Roth over here. We got Joseph Prince, buddy of Joel Osteen, also a heretic. There's T.D. Jakes. It's basically a crossover. It's it's another six one six of one half dozen of the other. Uh, Creflo Dollar. Uh, who else we got here? The Jim Baker Show. More Joseph Prince. We got um, John Hagee, right? Thinks Jews no, don't need the gospel. If you're Jewish, you're just saved automatically. Brilliant, John. Uh, who else we got here? Some more Sid Roth, some James Robinson, Robinson, and uh, some Joyce Meyer. Right? So another heretical network linked up with uh, TBN. They're basically the same. Well, Robert Morris is a part of TBN's lineup, and uh, he's a part of Daystar. Why do I mention Robert Morris here? Well, so we are very, very honored today. Will you welcome, please, Greg Laurie? Oh, that's right. Greg Laurie. There you go. Greg Laurie has been a friend of Robert Morris for a long time. Uh, if you forgot, Greg Laurie is who John MacArthur is going to be uh, partnering with. So Robert Morris, the Prosperity Heretic, TBN, and Daystar affiliate, um, is a friend of Greg Laurie's. That's who Greg Laurie promotes. That's who uh, John MacArthur has no problem sharing a stage with. Greg Laurie. Greg Laurie, friend of Robert Morris. Gosh, Greg Laurie. Who's Greg Laurie not a friend of? Uh, This is back in 2012. This is nothing new for Greg Laurie. He's been compromising in cascading effect for quite some time. Here's Hillsong United. Uh, This uh, this was called the One Conference back at um, Calvary Kendall when Pedro Garcia was still a pastor there before he was dismissed for lifestyle choices, whatever that means. I believe Hillsong took over that church somehow. Very peculiar situation. But there's Greg Laurie, you got Brian Houston, you got Francis Chan, the new NRA, I mean NRA, NAR affiliate, uh, James McDonald, and even Franklin Graham decided to show up. Yeah, well, no no wonder there. Franklin Graham will show up at a Catholic Mass if you invite him. He has no problem with any of that, but that's another story. Greg Laurie, friends with the whole Hillsong crew. Levi Lusco is a good buddy of his. Uh, we'll get back to that in a second. Here's uh, here's Greg Laurie and Brian Houston. All right, Brian Houston is the leader and founder of Hillsong Church, that just became its own denomination. It is a word faith movement. Uh, Brian Houston on record saying uh, Christians and Muslims serve the same God. That is not out of context. 
He said that. He said that emphatically. He said, in a desert, there's two birds. You've got vultures and you've got hummingbirds, and they both find what they're looking for in the same desert. You know, you take it all the way back to the Old Testament, the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God. That's what he said. Allah to a Muslim, to us, Abba, Father, God. That's what Brian Houston says. Uh, no wonder Brian Houston's been a longtime friend and promoter of Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Meyer, Rick Warren, the whole shebang. They've all appeared at his Hillsong conferences. All of them. That's who Greg Laurie is. That's who Greg Laurie affiliates with. That's what Greg Laurie promotes. That's who he is. Tell me who your friends are. I'll tell you who you are. Greg Laurie is that. Levi Lusco, as I just mentioned. Levi Lusco. Uh, moving up in the ranks, had a background in Calvary chapels, and um, has embraced the whole uh, Word of Faith Hillsong movement. The the cool hipster you know, preacher guy, friend with Carl Lentz, friend of Stephen Furtick, etc. This is from Stephen Furtick's Code Orange Revival uh, just a couple years ago. All the way from Montana, his wife's name is Jenny. He's a great man. That's about enough of that. My ears hurt. Why does Stephen Furtick sound like a crazy person? Uh, well, in his own words, T.D. Jakes is the greatest preacher of our time. That's what Stephen Furtick says. He says, if you come to my church every week, even if you don't know it, T.D. Jakes is the man that feeds your soul every week. That is his mentor. That is the man that he has looked up to. Um, T.D. Jakes is a, is a crazy person himself. He's a charlatan. He's a profiteer. And he's a heretic. And so is Stephen Furtick. And so is Levi Lusco. Joyce Meyer jo joined them at this very same conference. But anyway, that's Greg Laurie's uh, buddy, pal, protege, so to speak. Levi Lusco. All right, Greg Laurie's supposed to be the old man imparting wisdom. That is the discretion of John MacArthur's partner in arms over here, Greg Laurie. Um, so we got the Code Orange revival. This is no, this is nothing new for some of John MacArthur's friends. You got Al Mohler hanging out with Rick Warren at the very same Proclaim conference just a couple years ago. And by the way, H.B. Charles Jr., close personal friend of John MacArthur. I believe he was at the Shepherds Conference this past year. He's also a Gospel Coalition council member, etc., etc. He and John MacArthur go way back. Well, neither he nor MacArthur's other friend, Al Mohler, had any problems with partnering with Rick Warren, so why should John MacArthur? Uh, Joni Erickson Tata. Um, Joni Erickson Tata. Well, she's uh, uh, disabled, and she has an organization called Joni and Friends. They help disabled people, right? Uh, well, uh, be that as it may, Joni Erickson Tata has no problem embracing folly either. This is her partnering with Rick Warren a couple years ago. This is probably the third, at least third time that she has partnered with Rick Warren at a conference. Uh, this picture is very blurry. You also have Alistair Begg there, right? Alistair Begg is highly touted by this same group of people, but he had no problem partnering with heretic and ecumenist Rick Warren. No problem whatsoever. Um, let's see here. This is Joni Erickson Tata in a commercial that was made to uh, uh, talking about immigration, right? We'll notice some of the people that she joined up with to do this promo. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Beth Moore. All the nations will be gathered before him. Bianca Wattis. Separate Joni. The people There's Joni. One from another. As a shepherd separates hey, the sheep Hey, Rick Warren's wife, Kay. He will put the sheep on his right mm. and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared Christine for Kane from Hillsong. the creation of oh. the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger. I was a stranger. I was a stranger. Fui estranjero. So this nice, big, political, emotional uh, campaign to uh, take in immigrants, basically. 
uh, among the heretic women that Joni has no problem uh, yoking up with would be Rick Warren's wife, Kay. You have Christine Kane. Remember her? Let's let's go back to TBN. That's right. That's who Christine Kane is. Remember her? Christine Kane. Uh, she's been a longtime friend of, of Joel Osteen and uh, T.D. Jakes and Brian Houston. They are all in league together. All of them. Uh, that's Joni Erickson Tata. That is her discretion. That is her wisdom. That is her discernment partnering with heretics, right? Uh, gosh, if that weren't enough, let's see. Here's a here's here's some of Joni's own words. If you can't read this, this is from her website, joniandfriends.org. Uh, she's talking about a, uh, a list of the top 100 best-selling books. She says, as I looked over the titles, I noticed that for the most part, they had to do with developing your self-image, improving finances. There were lots of adult coloring books, easy reading devotional books, blah, blah, blah. Okay, she says, um, I saw there were virtually no books helping the reader to cling to God through trials. There were no books dealing with hardship and suffering. Those books were missing, with the exception of Anne Voskamp's book, Broken, and one by Francis Chan. Those are the two that she does approve of. Francis Chan, the NAR affiliate, and, and Anne Voskamp. Uh, yes, there was Rick Warren's perennial bestseller, The Purpose Driven Life, but that was about as deep as it got. I had just, I had to just sit back and shake my head. So I want you to notice there, the three books that she lists as exceptions, things that she didn't need to shake her head about, were Anne Voskamp, Francis Chan, and Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Lie. That's what Joni Erickson Tata approved of. Yes, there was Rick Warren's book, but that was, that was the best. That was as deep as it got, and there was nothing else. Well, of course she has no problem uh, with the purpose-driven lie. Of course she promotes it. She's been yoking up with Rick Warren for quite some time. Let's go back to this list with John MacArthur and his new friends, Rick Warren and Greg Laurie. Who do we have here? We have Devon Franklin. This is John MacArthur's new ministry partner, Devon Franklin, who he will be partnering with. And uh, in Christian unity, oh, let's not forget, we got Rick Warren's wife down here as well. We'll get to this in a second. Devon Franklin, who is... Devon Franklin. Wow, that's so good. Come on, Lakewood, let's welcome Mr. Devon Franklin. First time here at Lakewood. That's great, Devon. What a movie. Thank you. Amen. Now, that was great for me, but guess what? I didn't wake you up this morning. I that's right. That was Joel Osteen introducing Devon Franklin. Big shocker there, isn't it? Joel Osteen and Devon Franklin and uh, Rick Warren and Christine Kane and Robert Morris and uh, just a sea of heresy. That's what's going on. That's who Devon Franklin is. That's who John MacArthur will be partnering with at Proclaim 2019. Who else do we have on this list? Besides Rick Warren's wife, we got Kurt Cameron, right? Uh, a lot of people have uh, respected him for a lot of years. Listen, uh, Kirk Cameron, for uh, whatever perceived good he may have done and said and, and, and helping with uh, apologetics and, and things like this, uh, this is inexcusable. It's inexcusable folly. It's inexcusable nonsense. And this is what happens when people are in the business of business. This is what happens when so-called Christians have no discretion, and they work for another master. This is what happens when you serve money over God, when you serve prestige over God, when you serve anything over God. Compromise is the inevitable result. That goes for the million-dollar man, Mr. John MacArthur, as well. Mark and Roma Downey, Mark Burnett and Roma Downey. You've probably heard the name Mark Burnett. He's created several television shows. I think he created the show Survivor, amongst others, and the uh, the Jesus TV show that they did. Anyway, these are practicing Catholics, outspoken and open practicing Catholics. So the proclaimed 2019 organizers, they deem anybody with a Christian label to be Christian. So this is a false unity. Unity. This is an unbiblical unity. This is a unity of spirit without truth, is what it is. Exactly the opposite of what Jesus said. Spirit and truth. This is what happens when you serve your feelings, or you serve money, or you're in the business of business. John MacArthur now partnering with Rick Warren, Greg Laurie, Joni Erickson, Tata, Joel Osteen's right-hand man, Devon Franklin, etc., etc. Catholics, you name it. John MacArthur, what are you going to say now? What do you say to this, right? Well, I know what some people 
will probably say to this. The only objection, the only possible objection is, well, John MacArthur is going to go there to rebuke them. You're speaking, you're speaking hastily. You're getting ahead of yourself. We have to wait and see what he says. You're judging the man too soon. That, that's, your, that's your objection, isn't it? Yeah, I've heard this one before. It was erroneous then. It's erroneous now. John MacArthur's going there to rebuke them. That's your contention, isn't it? Well, that's not what his friend Al Mohler went there to do. No, he went there to partner with Rick Warren. Not only that, Al Mohler went to Saddleback Church and took pictures and tweeted about it with Rick Warren. But that's another story. So your objection is, you don't know what John MacArthur's going to say. He's going to go there to try to evangelize them. All right. Let's not take my arguments for it. I am now going to appeal to four of John MacArthur's staunchest proponents and defenders. Justin Peters of Justin Peters Ministries, Todd Friel of Wretched Radio, Phil Johnson, Executive Director of Grace to You, and Jordan Hall of Pulpit and Pen, right, Polemics Blog. Let's hear what they have to say about people who go to conferences with other people. We begin with Justin Peters being interviewed by Todd Friel. Okay, I'll tell you what, Justin, if I said to you, um, hey, Justin, I go to uh, Mormon conferences and I speak. They're really nice people. You know, I've talked to them about some of their issues and let them know what, what, what some of their problems are. What would you say to me? What kind of conference you said? A Mormon conference. Mormon conference, sorry. Yeah. You'd go, yeah. what? That's, the you, issue you, is not whether or not they're nice people. The issue is that they have a different gospel. Right. And, and if, you're, if you go there and you, you speak without calling them out for who they are and what they believe, then you are giving an implicit endorsement. Oh, you can say all day long, no, no, I'm not saying I endorse everything. Yeah, you are. If you don't call them out, as being false teachers, if you don't call them to true repentance and faith and the real Jesus and the real gospel, you are complicit in their sin. Sometimes I'm asked by people, would you ever go on TBN and preach? My answer to that is yes, I would. If they, if TBN had me host one of their Praise the Lord programs. It would be the last time. It, it would, would be they, the last time. Would, uh, we interrupt this programming. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> technical difficulties, please stand by. <laughs> Right, Justin says, if you go there and you don't call them out and uh, rebuke them in front of everybody, you're complicit in their sin. He says, yeah, I might take an invitation from TBN, but it would be the last time, right? Implying that he would provide some scathing rebuke. But they would never invite him, right? They would never invite him. Um, and we... We know that. We're going to listen to Phil Johnson and Todd Friel next, who reinforce this idea. Now, in this context, they're talking about Michael Brown. Michael Brown, because of his illicit partnerships with uh, a whole host of heresy. And they're talking about partnerships. Listen. Yeah, he's right next to Randy Clark. All of these, these are these are all... Look, if I do a conference, I know who's in the green room. I know what's going on out there. I know what these folks are about. I, have you? Did you get an invite to the Light the Fire Again conference? <laughs> no. No, and they wouldn't. No, of course not. Because when you do things like this, it's because you group them together because they're, they're in the same vein. Shepherd's Conference, you're probably not going to see Ken Copeland there. Right. And you're not going to see John MacArthur invited to a Ken Copeland shebang because... They're grouped together. Yeah, no probable about it. It's just that's not going to happen. And <laughs> <laughs> No probable about it. That's just not going to happen. You're not going to see John MacArthur invited to a Kenneth Copeland shebang. Well, you'll see him invited to a Rick Warren shebang. Care to uh, enunciate the differences for us? Hmm? Which one's a bigger heretic? So you can hear Todd Friel says... Um, when I do a conference with somebody, I mean, I know who's in the green room. I know who these people are, right? You know, these people, you don't invite people to conferences that you're not yoked together with. And he's right. 
These people don't just send out invites to, to anyone. He says they're in the same vein. Let's continue with Jordan Hall, who is speaking about Ronnie Floyd attending a conference from uh, IHOP, an IHOP conference with Mike Bickle. Listen. But he says this in his podcast about Ronnie Floyd. Southern Baptists considered Ronnie Floyd's present uh, presence at the International House of Prayer as an endorsement. So when they went to the charismatic event, they said, Ronnie Floyd is here. How bad could it be? So Southern Baptist lay people saw it as an endorsement, even though when Ronnie Floyd went to the microphone, he said, this isn't an endorsement. No one heard that because you're there with the applause and the aplomb and with the pomp and circumstance. You're there celebrating with them. No one hears you say this isn't an endorsement. All they see is you on stage. So it is what we call a tacit endorsement. Secondly, Roman Catholics considered Ronnie Floyd's presence an endorsement. They had a Catholic track. So it wasn't just charismatic. It was Roman Catholic. They had a Catholic track because they're all into contemplative prayer. And here, He's right. He's absolutely right. It didn't matter that Ronnie Floyd went up to the mic and said, listen, this isn't an endorsement. J.D. Hall says... It's a tacit endorsement. You're there. You're celebrating with them. You're participating with them. Not only do we have the heresy of Rick Warren and uh, and Greg Laurie and Joel Osteen's boy Devon Franklin here, we have something of a Catholic track ourselves here. So are Catholics going to see John MacArthur's presence as an endorsement as well? I think they are. I think J.D. Hall was right. Um, There's simply no getting around this, right? Now, the people that will inevitably respond to this are going to do everything in their power to attack the messenger. Why? For the same reason the Sanhedrin attacked Jesus. Same exact reason. They don't have an objection. They have to resort to personal attack. They have to resort to ad hominem attack. Ah, he's got a tattoo. Quite right. Not that I approve of them at this point, but that's another story. It's an easy thing to to attack when you have no substance. Ah, who is he? As if it matters. Anything but addressing the facts. Anything but addressing the facts. They will go after anything and everything but the facts because they have to if they don't want to implicate their idol. So from pulpit and pen to wretched radio to Justin Peters Ministries to pick a person, Pirate Christian Radio, Phil Johnson of Grace to You, all of them have some explaining to do. Why do I point to them, at least initially? Well, these are supposed to be the discernment ministers. They're supposed to be the discerners, the people watching out, right, for the, for the greater good of the body, warning people of error, because most of the people that I've mentioned outside of John MacArthur all of them have warned about, in some respect, even Pulpit and Penn did an article about Joni Erickson Todd and Rick Warren's wife. They've almost all, I think all of them, have spoken and denounced Rick Warren. Uh, Greg Laurie has been mentioned. Uh, this guy is not as well known, but he's a friend of Joel Osteen. Uh, the Catholic uh, duo here, uh, Roma and, uh, and, and Mark. Right, These are all people that they would agree are problematic, to say the least. Rick Warren one of the worst. This man is a devil. That's the best thing I could say about him. And John MacArthur is there with all the pomp and the applause, right? To use J.D. Hall's words, he is there. It's what we call a tacit endorsement. Those are their arguments. Those are the arguments from the friends and colleagues of John MacArthur lambasted Michael Brown for his participation in conferences, saying, listen, I know who's in the green room. You participate in conferences with these people, you're complicit. So to preempt the emotional argument that's coming, that people are saying, well, John MacArthur, he's going to go there and rebuke them. Well, as Todd Friel and Phil Johnson rightly asserted, you're not going to get an invitation to this conference, to these conferences. And, and Phil says, no, no probable about it. You're just not going to see John MacArthur invite, invited to certain conferences. But um, not only was he invited, he accepted. And there he is with his fla- face plastered next to Rick Warren, Greg Laurie, 
et cetera, et cetera. This is a massive problem, a problem of huge proportions. I have attempted to warn about John MacArthur's continued compromise for quite some time. You can go through the catalog of videos. You can see all of his friends participating, but now it's culminating. Now it's coming to a head. John MacArthur himself partnering with heretic and ecumenist, ecumenist extraordinaire Rick Warren at the proclaimed 2019 conference coming up in Anaheim, California. Now what do we do? Are, is mum going to be the word from the discernment community, from the Christian community at large? What do you do when a mirror is held up? Do you cast yourself into a state of denial and pretend the image isn't there? Or do you do something to amend the image? Do you do something to take care of the problem? The mirror just tells you what the problem is. If you start punching the mirror, you've got issues. My anticipation is that you're going to see a whole lot of people punching at mirrors pretty soon. They don't like the information because it forces them to contend with their reality. The status quo is now being challenged. John MacArthur has long been held as a bastion of truth, one who's earnestly contending for the faith and standing against all of this error. Meanwhile, saying that people can take the mark of the beast and still be saved. There are multiple errors flowing throughout the MacArthur camp. And now we have one of such... Uh, such a spectacle on our hands, right? Such a prominent and visible example. What do we do? Are we going to remain in denial? Or is somebody going to say something? Justin Peters lamented only a couple of days ago that Michael Brown needs to call people out by name. His, that's where that clip was from. His failure to do so is complicity. Failure to call people out. If you refuse to call them out, you're, agree you're in agreement with them and you're a participant with them in their sin. Well, the same goes for John MacArthur and Pope-loving ecumenist Rick Warren and Hillsong-embracing compromiser Greg Laurie and uh, Joel Osteen's friend and prosperity uh, heretic Devon Franklin and Roma and, and Mark the Catholics. We got an issue here, don't we? Feel free to attack the messenger if it'll make you feel better. But you're going to have to contend with these facts. These are the facts as they stand. These are the facts as they stand. Second John 11 says not to greet people that are bringing false doctrine, not to welcome them into your home. To do so is to be a partaker in their wicked works, in their evil deeds. Romans 16, 17 says to avoid those who bring contrary doctrine. They cause divisions contrary to sound doctrine. Nothing could be truer of a man like Rick Warren. Talk about contrary doctrine. Talk about divisions being made because of it. We're told to avoid them. John MacArthur partners up with him. We're told to come out and be separate. We're told to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. We see in 1 Samuel, Eli overlooking the sin of his sons, and God kills him for it, not to mention his sons. How can two walk together if they are agreed? Amos 3.3. They cannot. They must be agreed if they walk together. And even if they say, I'm not here to endorse everybody here, According to Justin Peters, according to Todd Friel and Phil Johnson and J.D. Hall, some of John MacArthur's closest friends, colleagues, and proponents, that's not true. If you're there with them, you are giving a tacit endorsement. Those are their words, not mine. A reckoning is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Watch for those who attempt to attack the messenger. Those who attack the messenger have no substance in themselves and have the credibility of the Sanhedrin. They have the credibility of a Pharisee. They cannot contend with the arguments. They will not contend with the facts because there is an idolatry problem lurking deep within. If there weren't, they would say something. They would take the call of forsaking all for the cause of Christ seriously, right? Whoever doesn't hate his father, mother, brother, sister, yes, his own life also. If you can't call John MacArthur's error out, whose team are you on? Who are you really working for? 
we either submit to Christ and his word, showing no partiality in judgment, or we betray that we are in the business of business, which I contend to you most of these men are. It is a business enterprise for them. It is business-mindedness that drives them. Though there's plenty of biblical references. There's plenty of scripture th- truths. You can find 50 years worth of preaching from John MacArthur. Let me, let me say this emphatically. A thousand past rights do not justify a wrong. Ever. Ever. A thousand justified rights do not ever, uh, sorry, a thousand uh, past right actions do not ever justify a wrong. Ever. I'm going to read a quote real quick that I have uh, read on other occasions. Hopefully I can find it relatively quickly. This is a quote from Charles Spurgeon. This is from uh, 1888, Sword in the Trial. Failure at a crucial moment may mar the entire outcome of a life. A man who has enjoyed special light is made bold to follow in the way of the Lord and is anointed to guide others therein. He rises to a place of love and esteem among the godly, and this promotes his advancement among men. What then? The temptation comes to be careful of the position that he has gained and to do nothing to endanger it. The man, so lately a faithful man of God, compromises with worldlings. And to quiet his own conscience, he invents a theory by which such compromises are justified, even commended. He receives the praises of the judicious. He has, in truth, gone over to the enemy. The whole force of his former life now tells upon the wrong side. To avoid such an end, it becomes us ever to stand fast. Sword in the Trowel, 1888. I want you to notice the first sentence of that again. Failure at a crucial moment may mar the outcome of a life. I quote Charles Spurgeon for a couple of reasons here. Number one, he's right. And number two... He's quite venerated among the aforementioned. All of the men I just mentioned respect Charles Spurgeon. They may not respect me, they may not like me, and they don't have to. Facts are facts. Truth is truth. Whether you like the messenger or not. There's not a prophet that didn't meet his demise at the hands of his own countrymen because they hated truth and loved lies. Jesus himself, the very embodiment of truth. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Was killed. Killed by those who hated truth. He came unto his own, and his own knew him not. It's no small thing if somebody who proclaims truth is is persecuted or hated for it. Um, It shouldn't be otherwise. Jesus said it would happen. So I anticipate plenty of hate. Nothing new. Listen to Charles Spurgeon if you won't listen to me. If everything John MacArthur did was right up into this point, and it hasn't been, but if it were, failure at a crucial moment may mar the entire outcome of a life. Wow. Why don't you meditate on those words for now? John MacArthur, now in league with and partnership with Rick Warren. This is what John MacArthur's doing. This is how far it's gone. Rick Warren, Greg Laurie, friends of Joel Osteen. Will there be a response or will there be silence? Let's wait and see.